Hello, everybody. My name is Alyssa Fabricant, and I'm currently reporting from Miami. With the help of my mentor, Isabella Spaulding, I researched the etiology and treatment of dental phobia, which may also be referred to as dentophobia. I chose to research this topic because it's been a topic I've been curious about even since I was a child. As the daughter of a dentist, I couldn't help but take a little bit of offense when I heard a classmate of mine in kindergarten say that they fear the dentist. Upon further research, I now realize that there's a lot more to dental phobia than being afraid of my father. Let me show you. So, to properly understand dentophobia, I had to understand the origins of phobias in general. Specific phobias, as defined in the DSM-5, involve an intense fear of something that doesn't pose a real threat. Phobias impact about 19 million adults in the U.S. alone, with women being twice as likely as men to experience them. Symptoms include excessive fear, immediate anxiety, and avoidance, and these fears must last over six months to be classified as a phobia. Phobias can be divided into two main types, experiential and non-experiential. Non-experiential phobias are triggered without a personal traumatic experience, so... For example, someone might develop a fear of flying just by hearing scary stories. Experiential phobias, on the other hand, stem from past trauma, for instance, a bad flight experience leading to aerophobia, the fear of flying. So now let's analyze dental phobia. Dentophobia, or the fear of the dentist, can fall into either previous category, and to properly understand why it occurs, we must look at three crucial factors. Biological, social, and psychological. Biologically, there's evidence that the fear of dentists can be inherited, with studies estimating it to be 30% irritable. Social factors like socioeconomic status also play um, a role. Those in the lower income brackets often avoid dental care due to the fear of costs. And then psychologically, individuals with a history of trauma, such as sexual violence, may experience heightened anxiety in a vulnerable setting, like in a dentist's chair. These factors are all so different, but can all lead to the same specific phobia. In terms of treatment, there are two main approaches, pharmacological and psychotherapy. Pharmacological treatments like benzodiazepines and SSRIs offer short-term relief, but they have risks, such as addiction. Psychotherapy, particularly cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, is the gold standard for treating phobias. Exposure therapy, a key part of CBT, allows patients to gradually face their fears in a controlled setting, helping them learn to cope. So, in conclusion, dentophobia, like any other phobia, can significantly impact one's life. But with the right treatments, whether pharmacological or through psychotherapy, or both, there are ways to overcome it. Dentists play a critical role in reducing patient anxiety by creating a supportive and understanding environment through education, clear communication, and gradual exposure. They can help patients manage their fears and receive the dental care they need. So thank you so much for listening. Bye.